Hey there, good optometry morning. Dr. Michael Nelson, YouTube eye doctor here today. And today we are talking about that yellow spot on your eye. And we're gonna tell you all about what that is, what it's not, if it's a tumor. It's not a tumor. What you should do about it, some home treatments, and we are starting right now. All right, so what is that spot? That yellow spot on the surface of your eye is likely something called a pinguecula. Now, a pinguecula is a benign, small growth on the surface of the conjunctiva that people might get and has this yellowish appearance. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the eyeball. So we've got our eyeball model here again, and we've got the cornea, which is the clear tissue on the front of the eye. You got the conjunctiva or the white part of your eye. And basically the conjunctiva is this loose, multi-layered, moist tissue that sits over the surface of the white part of your eye. Now underneath the conjunctiva is the area that's called the sclera, and that's what makes it appear white. But the conjunctiva is this clear tissue that sits on top of it. And that's where a pinguecula develops. Okay, so a pinguecula is made up of proteins and lipids and calcium, and it has this raised area on the surface of the conjunctiva. It'll also have probably some more blood vessels in and around it, so it might look a little bit more red in that area. And the pinguecula is gonna develop on the areas of our conjunctiva that are exposed to the elements. So the areas that are not covered typically by our lids, so we have the temporal side and the nasal side where you can develop pinguecula. Typically, they're gonna develop more on the nasal side of your eye. So what's causing this yellow pinguecula to develop on the surface of the conjunctiva? So generally we think it's exposure to the elements. And there's two factors that we are thinking that's involved in causing a pinguecula to develop. Number one, UV light. So chronic long-term exposure to UV light over a lifetime will often cause irritation to that surface and cause a pinguecula to develop. And the other reason is due to dryness and irritation, due to dust, wind, exposure to the elements can more likely cause a pinguecula to develop. So here's my analogy about a pinguecula that I give to patients all the time. I consider it similar to developing a callus on your hand. So when you develop a callus on your hand, basically it's your skin's response to try to protect the underlying tissue because there's a lot of irritation, namely from friction. Now a pinguecula, it's not developing because of friction, but the eye is exposed to these irritants, either the UV light or dryness or exposure to dust and the elements. And basically your eye is saying, there's a lot of stuff that's attacking your eye. We need to protect the eyeball because the eyeball is pretty important to us. And so what we want to do is we want to add some protective layers over the surface to try to protect that tissue. And then you develop a pinguecula. So when you have this yellow growth on the surface of your eye, it's a good chance it's a pinguecula. But there's also a differential diagnosis that we will look at. And so if you go see your eye doctor, they're going to look at this spot on your eye and they're going to say, okay, probably a pinguecula, but what else could it be? Could it be something else? And so there's a list of things that we're going to try to rule out. So on that list, number one is something called a pterygium. So a pterygium is the same type of process as a pinguecula, but rather than just staying confined to the conjunctiva, it starts to grow onto the surface of the cornea, onto the clear tissue of the eye. And a pterygium is going to have more vascularization, so it'll have more growing blood vessels, and it'll have this tendency to grow onto the surface of the cornea. So there's, but the easy way to differentiate between a pterygium and a pinguecula is where it's located. Pinguecula is not onto the cornea, a pterygium is. Another common thing that this might be is something called a flectenule. So now a flectenule will be in the same location on the conjunctiva, and it'll have this flame kind of red lesion on the surface of the eye. A flectenule is a little bit different because it's a hypersensitivity reaction to some antigens that are that get exposed onto the surface of your eye, but your eye doctor is gonna be able to differentiate that one for you. Another thing to differentiate out is if this is malignant or some type of pre-malignancy. And so there are some types of malignancies and cancers and pre-malignancies that can develop develop rarely, fortunately, on the surface of the conjunctiva that you want to rule out. Another common thing that might kind of look like a pinguecula is something called a dermoid. A dermoid is more of like a white growth or bump on the surface of the eye. It typically is a little bit uh, lower down uh, on the cornea, but that one's, again, pretty easy for your eye doctor to rule out. And the last one that I'm going to mention here is something called a conjunctival cyst. A conjunctival cyst is basically a fluid-filled pocket on the surface of the conjunctiva where there's basically kind of some trap fluid uh, and it looks kind of like a blister. It's not the same process as a blister, but it kind of looks like that. And that's pretty easy for your eye doctor to differentiate. So if you have a bump or a lump on the surface of the conjunctiva or anywhere on your eye and you're really concerned about what it is, 
Make sure you see your eye doctor and your optometrist can rule out and help differentiate what it is. And it's a good chance that they're going to say that this is a pinguecula. Okay, so let's say you know that this is a pinguecula. That's what you have. What are you going to do about it? Well, what do you need to do about it? Number one, there's only two reasons why you need to do something about it. Number one is if it's irritating. Sometimes they're large or inflamed enough that when you blink or wear your contact lenses, you can feel that and it feels a little bit irritated. Then maybe you want to do something about it. Or the other reason you might want to do something about it is if cosmetically you don't like the appearance of it. If it's really noticeable and you want to get rid of it in that way. Otherwise, if this isn't bothering you or not irritating your eye and it doesn't bother you how it looks, you don't have to do anything about this at all. So let's talk about some home treatments that you can do for your pinguecula. So there's basically two home treatments that you can do for your pinguecula, and it's important to realize that neither of these home treatments are going to get rid or eliminate the pinguecula completely. What they can do is help reduce how much it's going to progress so it doesn't get worse or get bigger. Or what they might do is quiet it down a little bit so it's not quite as noticeable or quite as irritating on the surface of your eyes. So number one, what you can do is protect yourself against UV light. So if you're wearing UV protection when you're outside in the elements, that can help reduce the progression of the pinguecula. So this can include a number of things. So it can just include wearing a hat to protect yourself against UV light. It can include wearing sunglasses or it can w include wearing just your regular pair of eyeglasses. Because one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that UV protection in glasses, either sunglasses or glasses, doesn't have to do anything to do with how dark your tint is. It's a feature of the lens embedded into the lens. And you can have perfectly clear gla eyeglass lenses that have 100% UV protection. So make sure you wear UV protection when you go outside. So number two, what you can do is provide lubrication to the eye. So lots of lubrication to the surface of your eye can help diminish the progression of a pinguecula and maybe help quieten it down so it's not quite as noticeable. And so there's lots of eye drops. If you go to the drugstore, you're going to see this myriad of collection of eye drops and you're going to be going, which eye drop do I use? And that's a really good question because there's some you definitely don't want to use. So stay tuned to the end because I'm going to tell you which ones you don't want to use. But there's a few that you can definitely use. So what you want to look for is lubricating drops or artificial tears. And again, there's going to be a lot of those drops in that category. A couple of my favorites, there's one called Sustain Complete, which is a great lubricating drop. There's another one called Refresh Advance. Those are great over-the-counter lubricating drops. And I'm going to put a link to all these drops down in the description. So if you're looking for these, you can pick them up for yourself. But better yet, what you want to look for are non-preserved artificial tears. So a lot of lubricating drops out there will have some preservatives in them. And what that means is they can put more in the bottle and make it last longer so it doesn't get in, contaminated with bacteria and, and things in the, in the bottle. And so it lasts longer so it's a little bit cheaper. But those preservatives, if you're using them a lot on the surface of your eye, they can be irritating and they might cause some sensitivity in some people. So if you want to avoid that, look for non-preserved lubricating drops. And so a couple ways you can look for this, just read it on the label, it might say non-preserved for you. If you find lubricating do drops that come in these, in these individual vials, then it's a good chance that those are non-preserved. But my ap absolute favorite is this one, Thiolase Duo. And this is a non-preserved lubricating drop. And it's a really top tier lubricating drop that you can use all the time. And now it comes in a bottle, so you might think that it's preserved. But what's unique about this bottle is the design of the bottle prevents organisms from getting back into it. So they can make this solution in a bottle and have it non-preserved. So what you want to do with the lubricating drops is you want to use these a lot. You can't use the artificial tears lubricating drops too much and you need to use them on a regular basis and I'm talking like four or six times a day over a long period of time to notice some benefit. So both, so for both of these home treatments for either UV protection or lubricating drops, you're not going to get find immediate relief from your pregwecula, how it appears or how it looks or how it feels. You're not going to put on your sunglasses one day and say, wow, that's, that's gone away. Because a pregwecula doesn't develop overnight. It develops over a long period of time. And likewise, it's going to reduce and diminish over a long period of time. So you likely need to use lubricating drops and wear UV protection over months or years before you start to notice some effects. So stay with it, persevere, but use these and you will notice that that might diminish and at least prevent it from getting any worse. All right, and so before I forget, if you've learned anything new about Pinguecula so far, make sure you hit that like button down below so you can tell YouTube the value of this video. All right, so occasionally these Pinguecula are going to become really inflamed and look really red and really elevated and really swollen. And that's called Pinguecula-itis. And when that happens, you're probably going to need to see your optometrist. So if you go book an appointment with your optometrist, you're going to take a look at this and they can give you some prescription products that are going to help quieten down and get this under control so it's not irritating 
irritating and doesn't look so bad. And we're going to typically prescribe steroid eye drops or we're going to prescribe NSAID eye drops that will help reduce that inflammation and quiet it down, get it under control, and then you can go back to using uh, your lubricating drops and uh, wearing UV protection to give you a regular relief. Now, again, these treatments that you're going to get from your optometrist, they're not going to get rid of the pinguecula, but they're going to quieten it down and make it look a little bit better in the short term. So what do you do if you want to get rid of this pinguecula completely? It's driving you crazy. It's highly irritating you on the surface of your eye, or you hate how it looks. Everyone's commenting how it's look. Only, really, the only way you can get rid of this is through some type of surgery. And so there's basically two things that you can do. One is there's a, a superficial laser surgery that they can do to kind of remove that tissue off the surface. That's typically we do that only if there's not a lot of blood vessels on the surface of the pinguecula. But more likely, they're going to do a surgical a procedure where they can remove that pinguecula so it's not as prevalent and not as noticeable. All right, so I hope you learned a little bit about pinguecula. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button to get more videos just like this on a regular basis, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with that, have a great optometry day.